G'day Easton here. I'm a professional photographer and I shoot cars for a living. Now, many of my new subscribers seem to be iPhone users who are very new to photography. So I thought I'd talk a little bit more about iPhone photography. Specifically, I'm here today to talk about Apple Pro Raw and whether you should switch that toggle on or not. Now, Pro Raw is currently only available on the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max models. Specifically, you need the A14 Bionic chip and 6GB of RAM. In comparison, the non-Pro iPhone 12 models have 4GB of RAM. Now, it's important to note that in comparison to a single RAW exposure, Apple's camera system is an ecosystem of cameras, sensors, software, and computational magic that gets packaged together into this new Pro Raw format. Now, as a professional photographer, you would assume that I would be all over the Pro Raw bandwagon and I would permanently have that Pro Raw toggle switched on on my phone. I mean, if you're one of the lucky few users who can shoot in Pro Raw, you might as well use it all the time. Well, not so fast. I've been using the new iPhone 12 Pro Max and iOS 14.3 and Pro Raw for the last couple of days. And I would say that from my initial impressions, I would not use the Pro Raw format by default all the time. In fact, I would only use Pro Raw under very specific circumstances, and here's why. Number one, storage space. According to Apple, Pro Raw files use up about 25 megabytes of data, and my first hand experience confirms this to be about right, ranging from 20 megabytes to 30 megabytes, depending on how much detail there is in the image. My HEIC files, however, range between 1 megabytes and 4 megabytes, again, depending on how much detail there is in the image. So, hypothetically, let's say we have 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, I know that doesn't include iOS and messaging and apps and all that other stuff, but let's just say, hypothetically, you have 128 gigabytes of storage. That's around about 5,242 Pro Raw files, assuming each file is about 25 megabytes each. Now, 5,200 images sounds like a lot, but by comparison, using the same amount of storage, if we're shooting in the HEIC format, we can shoot over 43,000 images. That's over eight times the storage efficiency of Pro Raw. There is a certain qualitative value in being able to shoot more images. Number two, if you're just documenting everyday things, you probably don't need to be shooting in Pro Raw. Most of what I shoot in my album is just documenting things. Car spotting supercars on the road, photocopying receipts, serial numbers. Most of what we shoot in the real world with our phones is just documenting stuff. And we don't need that creative flexibility of raw. Plus, Apple's computational magic applies to their JPEG and HEIC files as well anyway. So you don't need to be shooting Pro Raw to be getting the benefits of Deep Fusion and Smart HDR, for instance. Number three, if you don't plan on editing the photos later, you probably don't need to be shooting in Pro Raw. If it's not the kind of photo you're going to tweak and filter for Instagram, you probably don't need to shoot in Pro Raw. Pro Raw is about technical flexibility, but in particular, it is about creative flexibility. And if you're not going to be taking advantage of that, you probably don't need to be shooting in Pro Raw. Number four is if you want to take photos for immediate distribution and you don't have time or you don't intend to edit them in the meantime. Because whilst Pro Raw is supported natively in the iPhone, it's not supported widely anywhere else. If you want to distribute photos through emails and social media and you don't have time or the need to edit them, HEIC and in particular JPEG is a widely adopted format that anyone on the receiving end can use. For instance, if you email a pro raw image of your new kitten to your parents, not only are they going to have to open a 25 megabyte attachment to that email, um, they're also not going to know what to do with that file when they receive it. But of course, there are very specific advantages to shooting in Pro Raw. And here's some of the circumstances in which I personally would be turning that format on. Number one, creative flexibility. Any moment that you capture that you care enough to want to edit later is probably worth doing in Pro Raw. As per my last video showing off what Pro Raw can do as a professional camera, it's invaluable having that tool available. Number two, you want the best image quality possible. Now, whilst the iPhone does an exceptional job at maximizing image quality in their JPEG and HEIC formats, thanks to their computational processing magic, Pro Raw will always have a creative and technical edge over JPEG and HEIC. So if you're documenting something important like artwork and you require that higher fidelity, it makes sense to shoot in in Pro Raw. As an extreme example, it's very common for museums to be shooting with medium format cameras at 100 megapixels or more to archive their artwork and other literature at the highest fidelity possible. Number three, to overcome some technical limitations. Now, iPhones are smart 
and I mean really, really smart. Their computational magic and processing power, even in JPEG and HEIC, generally overcomes so many problems in the real world. But sometimes it can get things wrong, and Pro Raw is just another trick up your sleeve that you can use to overcome that limitation. Examples are like when your white balance is off, for instance, and you need to create that with the flexibility of Pro Raw, or if your exposure meter is slightly off because you're photographing a very high key image, something bright, or something very dark, like a low key image. Examples being like a black car interior. And finally, number four, you are. Uh, happen to be doing a professional photo shoot. As crazy as that sounds, it is perfectly doable. So if you are a professional, um, you probably should be shooting in RAW or Pro RAW. Anyway, I hope your iPhone photographers found that helpful. I'm currently working on more Pro RAW videos, so be on the lookout for that, and I'll see you soon.